Hello, hello, hello. Hi guys. Hi guys. How are you guys doing? What's up, Jonathan's son? You're really early? You are really early. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey DV, I, I miss you too. Thanks for coming. What's up, Asian man? Asian man, hey. I'm also an Asian man. Hey Drift, how are you doing? Hey Nikki. What's up, Nikki? Alright, what's up, Katie? I'm glad you could join. Oh, K Bai says hi. Hi, K Bai. How's it going? Hey. Alrighty. How are you guys doing this week? Huh? 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 What's up, Patrick? Glad to see you. Hey, Zayla. Zala? Zayla? Pretenui. I don't know how to say that. All right. Uh, okay. I do have snacks today. I do have a new snack. Look at this. Check it out. Tim chips. This is a hot garlic flavor. I never had that flavor before. All right. Do you guys like shrimp chips? You guys know what shrimp chips are, right? These are really good. Get them at like Asian markets. Uh, all right, let's see. Hot garlic. Uh, how? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Okay. Let's see. Hot garlic. Hmm. It smells kind of like garlic. I bet it's really salty. It smells really salty. There is a little bit of a garlic aftertaste. I love it. You can, yeah. It's not that hot, actually. I was worried that it's gonna be hot and it'll interfere with the reading, but no. Pretty good. Pretty good. Can't really taste the garlic, but okay. <clears throat> Ah, people know. People know. You guys like that, huh? The shrimp chips? Those are really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, people who don't go to Asian markets don't know about them. What am I reading? Uh, well, well, we're, like, in the middle <laughs> of the story. We're in, like, chapter 23 or something. So, yeah, you, if you're listening today, then you're going to be... Uh, I don't know how much you're going to understand, but it's like it's the middle of the story. Yeah, there's a playlist um, that you can see in the description. Yeah. If you want to go back to the beginning and. Uh, if you want to go back to the beginning and and listen to it, how do I talk so crisply? I don't know. Is this crisp? I don't even know what that means. Dum, 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 dum. What's up, Lost? Yeah, there are so many chapters. We're in book. We're in like so. Blah, blah, blah. There are what? 71 chapters? Yeah, the chapters are weird. So it's actually. No, there's actually 40 chapters. But uh, it's. A lot of them are split into two. So we're at. Uh. If we're if we're counting the 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 splits, then we're at chapter forty two. So, uh, yeah, we're like a little bit af a little bit, um, into the second half of the story, and it's a pretty good story. What's up, Crazy Red? 
No offense, but my avatar looks like a sweet potato. Why is that an offense? That, I think that is a compliment. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so if you remember last week, um, uh, I bought a, well, me and my brother, we bought a TV for my dad and my mom, my parents, because they, their TV, um, their TV broke. Okay. So we bought them a new one. It's pretty good. It's like a 75 inch one. Um, uh, I didn't, so I could have, we could have bought the OLED TVs, which are really expensive and they're, they're like the latest technology or whatever. And they look, they look really good. Like no doubt, right? If you look at them side by side with the, the OLED and the QLED TVs, they look really good compared to the older ones, but they're just super expensive. So we bought the less expensive one, but it's big. Um, yeah, we went to Costco, right? We looked it up online. We went to Costco and we saw, I was going to buy a 70 inch TV because we saw that it was not that, it wasn't that expensive. But then um, we went to Costco and then we saw that there's a 75, we saw, we saw the 70 inch, right? And then we saw next to it, a 75 inch TV and it had the same price, at the same price, you guys. Okay, it was a sale or something. So we got that one. We got that one pretty fast. Yeah, so we we bought them a new TV. They're they're pretty happy. Um, they probably don't. They probably can't see the difference. I don't know. Was there uh, the the older TV had 1080p uh, resolution, and the new one had is 4K, right? So, uh, I don't know. I don't know if they can tell the difference. I mean, I can tell the difference. So anyways, yeah, they're pretty happy. Um, we took the old TV and we put it outside, right? So, and I wrote like free on it and I, I, <laughs> I put a free sign on it. So <clears throat> yeah, funny thing is that so we put that outside and then I also put the remote and the, um, the power cable along with it, right? And wouldn't you know it, someone, no one took the TV, but they did take the power cable and the remote. <laughs> Bastards. Alright. Hopefully someone takes the TV, but poor that person uh poor that person because they won't have a remote and a power cable to go along with it. <clears throat> dun dun hear you out. Since the new translator doesn't use any hard words, how about we get one song at the end anyway? No, uh, I don't think that's part of the deal. That part of the, that's not part of the deal. You got to catch me not knowing the definition of a word for me to sing a song. What do I like other than shrimp chips? I like a lot. What do you mean? Just snacks? Uh, okay, you know, that's the chips that I buy the most is uh, Lay's sour cream and onion. I don't know why that's so good. It's so good. Yeah, I always lean towards that one. What's up, Speedy McMeedy? <clears throat> All right, guys. So let's recap what happened last chapter, okay? <clears throat> So last time, our hero, Ling Hu Chong, he, um, he sees an ambush uh, waiting for... Well, see, he sees a couple of people hiding like behind bushes and stuff, uh, waiting for an ambush, right? And then he sees uh, a group of people, a group of nuns from the Hangshan school, um, walking towards them. Okay, So these, uh, these students from the Hangshan schools are going towards this ambush, and he wants to, he wants to save them, okay? But the problem is, um, he's now branded as a bad guy. Okay, he's like, he's a criminal now. Uh, he's a criminal to everyone now, okay? So he can't go out and say, he can't, he can't just go out there and say, hey, stop, there's an ambush, right? They're gonna, 
they're gonna attack him okay because they think he's the enemy so he um he dresses up as he disguises himself as a government official calling himself a general or something and then oh we also see yi lin again yay our fa everyone's favorite nun um she's there uh part of the group <clears throat> but she doesn't recognize she doesn't recognize him um so see he disguises himself he goes over there he try at first he tries to block their path uh and they um but it doesn't work right they still want to go get over <laughs> they like they, they jump over him and stuff they still want to get uh go go along up the hill and then so he's like oh that's fine he's gonna so he goes with them right he goes with them up the hill to the place of the ambush and then the ambushers attack but luckily uh by this time ling hu chong is super strong already okay so he defeats them uh, he fights them along with the hung shan school so he they roundly defeat these ambushers and uh at the end of it he he, he uh they thank him uh the students of the Hangshan school thanks him and then he goes away okay he goes he goes off and then now the perspective of the story um changes to that of sister ding jing okay so ding jing so ding jing is um so in the Hangshan school okay the Hangshan school has three elders all right and um the three elders are basically the leaders of the school they have one leader um uh, but there, there are three elders in the school, okay, and they basically run the school. And Sister Ding Jing is one of them, okay. She's the eldest, although she's not the head, okay. She's the eldest, but she let her younger apprentice sister be the head of the school. So this Sister Ding Jing is the eldest, and then there's also Ding Xian, Ding Xian, who is the uh, who's the head, and then Ding Ye, who's the the youngest, but she's almost she's also the most hot headed. Okay, so we're in the perspective of Sister Ding Jing. Um, after the fight, she takes her Hangshan group of disciples, they go to a town, and, um, this town, uh, was pretty sus. There was no one in the town, it was empty, and they're like, uh, they don't, they didn't know what was going on. So, uh, they're in, they're in the town, and then, um, problems happen, right? So, uh, her disciples keep disappearing. And we don't know why, so they just keep disappearing one after the other. And afterwards, it was like after a while, it was just it was just her, and she got super frustrated and started yelling uh, at the ambush at the like whoever's uh, kidnapping her students. And then uh, seven people jump out from the shadows uh, to confront her. Right? And they jump out. And they jump out, and then they're standing there, and then that's where we ended. How's that? That was what happened last week. I should try dill pickle flavor of chips. Is that good? I'm not sure that's good. Dill pickle. What, uh, what chip has dill pickle? Is it those shrimp chips? I, I don't think I've ever seen dill pickle flavor before. Do I plan on reading another novel like this after I finish this one? Uh, probably, if people want. Why not? Uh, Yi Lin is the best. What's up, Sammy? How's it going? What is my favorite ice cream flavor? Mint chocolate chip. Mm. That's my only flavor. That's what I always get. Lay's has dill pickle flavor? Ew. Really? All right, let's look it up. Lay's, let me change the screen. Lay's dill pickle. Oh my God, you're right. I've never seen that before. Oh, maybe. I, oh, no, I think I have. I've seen it. I've seen it, and then I was like, yeah, yeah, I don't want it. I don't want this stuff. Is it good? All right, maybe I'll try it. It's amazing? Okay. Huh, apparently people 
Apparently, people like dill pickle flavored Lay's. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll try it someday. It better be good. Better be good. All right, I'll blame you guys. Waste my money. All right, good night, Great Crusader. Have a good sleep. Uh, I did a video on male male love. When is the woman woman video? <laughs> Um, unfortunately, there's a not, there's not a lot of, like, resources. There's not a lot of sources about, uh, female, female love in Japan. Yeah, it, it certainly happened. Like, like, it definitely happened. But there's not a lot of sources talking about it, unfortunately. Oh, I've looked. I've looked. Trust me. Um, I'm still looking. So if I have enough information about it, then I'll make a video about it. But, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Michael Collins. What's up, Michael Collins? Mint chocolate chip. Yeah, it is amazing. I have coffee ice cream. I'm not a fan of the coffee flavor. I, uh, I don't even drink coffee, actually. Yeah, maybe once in a while I have a Frappuccino or something from Starbucks. But I don't really drink coffee. I'm not a fan of the coffee flavor. So, no, I, I haven't had coffee ice cream. <clears throat> Oh, Rocky Road is good. Rocky Road is amazing, too. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Let's do this. <clears throat> Chapter 23, Part 2, Ambush. <laughs> All right. So remember, the translator is not that good <laughs> these days. Uh, I'm kind of sad that, that they changed translators, but okay, we'll pull, we'll, we'll push through it. <clears throat> she sighed heavily and shouted, "Okay, watch out for my sword." Oh wait, what's happening? Oh yeah, so she's uh, so remember she's facing off against the seven. Um, the seven men that jumped out from the from the shadows. She sighed heavily and shouted, Okay, watch out for my sword! She thrust her sword towards the person standing at the northwest. She knew that she was surrounded and that this thrust may not find its mark, so she used it as a false move. That person just stood still, waiting for the sword, as if he knew it was only a false move. Ding Jing Xu Tai, this is, Ding, this is sister Ding Jing, Ding Jing Shutai was planning to take her sword back, but when she saw him not paying attention to her, instead of taking it back mid-stroke, she put power into her right hand and pushed it forward. But the two people besides her target moved quickly and separately aimed their palms towards her left and right shoulders. Ding Jing Shutai leaned to one side, jumped into the air, turned around and thrust her sword towards the tall person at the east side. The tall man slid back half a step with a ringing sound. And with a ringing sound, the sword hit a heavy, heavy iron tablet. He then lifted the iron tablet and struck at the top of her sword. Ding Jing Shu Tai sneered, circled her sword, and thrust it towards an old man on the left. The old man extended his left hand along the sword's path to try and grab it. In the moonlight, it looked like he was wearing a black glove. Ding Jing Shu Tai guessed that the glove's material might be impervious to the sword thrust. That seemed like the only reason why he was brave enough to use just his hands to grab a longsword. Alright, at this point she's fighting seven enemies, so I don't see how she can, she can win. She fought one enemy after another. Ding Jing Shu Tai had now fought with five of the, of the seven enemies. She felt that these five enemies were not that good. If she were only fighting with one or even two of them, she would not be afraid at all and would probably, would most probably win. But against these seven people, when she attacked any little crack in one person's defense, it was immediately covered by the next person. Then they would be immediately counterattack and turn the situation dangerously against her. 
After some more fighting, she thought in alarm, Who are these capable people from the Devil's Sect? I know most of their well-known people. Their martial arts their martial arts and the weapons they use are also known by the Five Mountains Sword Alliance. So what's the background of these seven people? I really can't tell where they come from. I didn't anticipate that the Devil's Sect's power would grow so large in these past few years. They unexpectedly have many masters working for them. She had fought around 60 to 70 moves, but she was unable to keep up any further. She was now breathing heavily, when from the corner of her eyes she saw more than 10 shadows on the roof. Clearly, these people had been hiding there for a long time, oh shit, and only now it appeared suddenly. She gloomily muttered, it's finished. It's finished. I can't even handle these seven people. Now there are more enemies watching from the sides. Ding Jing, it would be hard to escape from your death today. You would suffer you would suffer a big insult if you fall into the enemy's hand. It would be better if you had killed yourself earlier. This stinky sack of leather is only my temporary residence, but when it's destroyed I would have I would still have some regrets. The sack of leather is her body, she means. This time I had been this time I had taken along many disciples and delivered them to their deaths. Old nun Ding Jing is ashamed to face Hang Shan School's ancestors. She thrust three times, shua, 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 forcing the enemies to take two steps back. She suddenly reversed the longsword and pierced it towards her own heart. Oh, she wants to kill herself. As her sword was about to reach her chest, a dang sound was heard. Her hand shook and the tip of her long sword was knocked away from her chest. A man was besides her with a sword in his hand. He exclaimed, Ding Jing Shu Tai, don't be short-sighted. Friends from Songshan School are here. He was the one who knocked her long sword away. She then heard the sounds of swords clashing more than ten men had one by one jumped out from their hiding spots to fight with those seven devil sect people. Oh yay, we're, we're being saved. What does impervious mean? It means like, can't be pierced. Like, protected against. Like a, like a, uh, like a, what do you call it? Like a bulletproof vest is impervious to bullets. What's up, Nodding Ham? Thank you so much. Having escaped from death, Ding Jing Shu Tai felt revitalized. She immediately went to join the battle again. But she saw that the Songshan people were now fighting two against one, and the seven devil sects people were at a disadvantage. Those seven people saw that the sheer number was overwhelming. She whistled and started to retreat towards the south. Ding Jing Shu Tai chased them holding her sword. She suddenly heard the sound of wind coming towards her and recognized that many small projectiles had been released. Ding Jing Shu Tai lifted her sword and concentrated on deflecting each of the projectiles aimed at her. In the middle of the night, there was only a glimmer of light from the moon and stars. Her long sword danced around and a ding ding sound was heard continuously as her sword deflected all the projectiles. As she was hindered by the projectiles, those seven devil sect people had managed to escape far. She heard the person behind her say, Hang Shang School's 10,000 Blossoms sword art is exquisite and peerless. Today our eyes have been widened. Ling Jing Shu Tai sheathed her long sword and slowly turned around. In a short moment, everything had become still and quiet. When she was fighting just then, she was a vigorous Wulin martial artist. But now that the fight is over, she had turned into an amiable and benevolent old nun. She joined her two hands in greeting the Songshan people and said, Older Marshal Brother Zong, thank you very much for breaking the encirclement. She now recognized the middle-aged man as Songshan school leader Zhou's younger Marshal Brother. So this is the younger brother of the leader of the Songshan school. His name was Zhong Zhen, and his nickname was Nine Bent Sword. This nickname was not because he really used a bent sword, but it was because his sword art fluctuates irregularly and was unpredictable. Ding Jing Shu Tai had met him before at a meeting of the Five Mountains Sword Alliance at Taishan Mountain Monastery. 
From the remaining Songshan school people, she knew three or four of them. Zhang Zhen cupped his hands in returning the courtesy. Wait, wait. Zhang Zhen cupped his hand, returning the courtesy. He smiled and said, Ding Jing Shu Tai, you fought with seven people by yourself. These seven people are the devil sex's seven star emissaries. Your sword art is really high. I admire you. Ding Jing Shu Tai pondered, So, these seven chaps are called seven star emissaries. She didn't want to appear unknowledgeable, so she didn't ask any more. Oh, she's never heard of them before. She thought she could inquire about those people some other day. It was already good enough now for her to know their names. One by one, the rest of the Songshan school people went up to greet her. Two of them were Zhang Zhen's Zhang Zhen? Zhang Zhen's younger martial brothers, while the rest were disciples a generation lower than them. Ding Jing Shu Tai was still returning the greetings when she said, I'm really ashamed. My Hangshan school has arrived in Fujian with several tens of disciples, but they've suddenly gone missing in this town. Marshal Brother Zhang, how long have you arrived at Nianbapu town? Do you have any clues for this old nun to investigate? She believed that Songshan school people had been hiding there for a long time, but they wanted to wait for her to get exhausted first before they came out and help. It was obvious that they wanted to shame her and at the same time show their power. She wasn't pleased at all. But many of her disciples had gone missing, and it was a matter of grave importance, so she had no choice but to ask them about it. She felt this was her own problem to handle, so she didn't want to ask these people for help. She already felt it was wrong to ask Zhang Zhen for information. Zhang Zhen said, Devil sect witches are very crafty. They knew that Shi Tai's martial arts is very astounding and that it would be very hard for them to win. So they secretly captured all the disciples first. Shi Tai, don't have to worry. Although the devil sect is daring, they wouldn't harm the martial sisters. Let's go down and discuss carefully on how we're going to save them. After he finished saying this, he extended his left hand, inviting her to go down. She nodded her head and jumped down. Zhang Zhen followed her and also jumped. He then went to the west while saying, I'll lead the way. After walking for a hundred feet, he turned north. They arrived in front of Xianan Inn, and she pushed the main door open. Shu Tai, we'll discuss the matter, the matter in here, said Zhang Zhen. The other two martial brothers were Divine Whip Dang Ba Ba Gong and Bright Hair Lion Gao Ke Xin. Gao Ke Xin. <clears throat> He's a lion with really with blonde hair. Okay, if you, if you say so. If uh, the three of them led Ding Jing Shu Tai to a big room upstairs, after the lamps were lighted, they took their seats while other disciples offered them tea and then retreated out of the room. Gao Ku Xin went to the door and closed it. Zhang Zhen said. We've long admired Shu Tai's sword art. Hang Shan School's is number one. Ding Jing Shu Tai shook her head and said, Wrong. My sword art isn't as good as my martial sister. It's also inferior to martial sister Ding Yi. Zhang Zhen smiled and said, Shu Tai, don't be too modest. We martial brothers have long admired the heroine, heroine, and been waiting to see, and been wait, uh, and been wanting to see Shu Tai's clever sword art. That's why we were late in helping. We don't have any bad intention. I sincerely apologize. Shu Tai, please don't blame us. Ding Jing Shu Tai felt a bit calmer and saw the three of them stand up and cup their fists. She also stood up to return the gesture and said, Well said. Zhang Zhen waited for her to sit down before saying, when our schools formed the Five Mountain Sword Alliance, we considered ourselves to be one of the to be of the same branch and share all wheel and wolves together. It's just that in the last few years we've had little time to meet together, and we also haven't collaborated on any matters. This has caused the Devil Sect to grow stronger and become more arrogant. He's a Lannister. Oh. 
You're right. You're right. Wait, what was his name again? Bright Hair Lion. He's a freaking Lannister. I knew he's a bad. I knew he was a bad guy. Ding Ching Shu Tai uttered a humph, thinking, "What is he doing, saying all these idle talk?" Zhang Zhen said again. Every day, older brother Zhuo says, "Together we are strong. Divided, we are weak. If the five mountain sword alliance can join together and become one, then the devil sect wouldn't antagonize us. Even the big school of Shaolin and Wu Dang, who have been enjoying their big reputation for a long time, wouldn't be able to compare to us." Brother Zhuo wishes that we no longer had this disunity of the five mountains sword schools. He wants us to combine together and become the Five Mountain School. That way, we would have many people cooperating together, and we would really become the leader of Wu Lin. What does Shi Tai think of this? Wu Lin is like、uh, the martial arts people. <laughs> Ding Jing Shi Tai scowled and said. Poor nun at Hangshan School is only an idle person and don't pay much attention to matters. However, Marshal Brother Zhong has raised an important matter. You should come with me to meet my Marshal Sisters to speak about this. Right now, the most important thing is to rescue my school's female disciples who have fallen into the Devil Sex's trap. We can discuss other matters in details after this. Zhang Zhen smiled and said. Shi Tai, don't worry. I've already asked the Songshan people to handle this. Hangshan School's problem is also Shang Songshan School's. We wouldn't let your school's disciples suffer. Ding Jing Shi Tai said, "In that case, many thanks. But I don't know how Brother Zhang came to have this optimistic outlook about my problem. What assurances do you have to say these words?" Zhang Zhen smiled smilingly said. Shi Tai yourself is here. Your Hangshan School's is well-known master. How could we still be afraid of a few demons from the Devil Sect? Also, there are there are still we Marshal brothers and several other Marshal nephews will definitely use all our power to fight them. If we still can't handle these second-rate fighters from the Devil Sect, then <laughs> that's too ridiculous for us to say. Ah、uh, crap! What does wheel mean? <sighs>、uh, woe means sadness. Wheel and we share all wheel and woes together. Ah,、uh, wheel. I'm gonna say hardships. Hardship. All right, come on, come on. A red swollen mark. That cannot be. That's not the right translation. That which is best for someone or something. Is that right? Come on, Miriam Webster. Oh, well-being. Oh no, I was wrong. <clears throat> Crap! That's one song you guys get at the end. That's one karaoke song. <laughs> so wheel means well-being. Okay. How many? How many people knew that? <clears throat> Be honest. <clears throat> Be honest. Yeah, so wheel means well-being, I guess. <clears throat> so to share all wheel and woes means to share all, I guess, to share all happiness and sadness. <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Yeah, yeah, good times and bad times. Ding Jing Shi Tai heard him talking about irrelevant things that she became anxious and angry. She stood up and said, Brother Shang is talking as if the situation looks good. Let's go now. Let's go now. Where are we? Where are you going, Shu Tai? asked Zhang Zhen. Going to save people, answered Ding Jing Shi Tai. Where are you going to save people? asked Zhang Zhen again. Ding Jing Shi Tai was dumbfounded and unable to answer the question. After a moment, she said, My disciples haven't gone missing for a long time, so of course they're still somewhere nearby. We've procrastinated for a long time now, so it's going to be more difficult to find them. Zhang Zhen said, According to our intelligence, the devil sect people have a lair not far from Nianbapu town. It's very likely that your school's martial sisters are being held captive there. According to... Ding Jing Shutai interrupted. Where's this lair? We'll go save them. Zhang Zhen slowly said, Devil sect would be well prepared to receive us. If we rashly go and make a mistake, then I can't say for sure that we'll be able to save them. We already know where they are. In my opinion, we should discuss this first before going to save them. This is a comparatively better plan. Ding Jing Shutai couldn't stand it anymore, but she still sat back down. She said, I'll listen to Marshal Brother Zhang's high opinion. I've come to Fujian under Marshal Brothers' order to discuss an important matter with Shu Tai. This matter concerns the destiny of the Wulin world. It also implicates the rise and fall of our Five Mountains Sword Alliance. So this is not a small matter at all. We need to discuss this big matter first, and the remaining matters like saving people will have to wait. This is how we should go about it, said Zhang Zhen. But I don't know what Big Brother Zhang is talking about. But I don't know what big matter Brother Zhang is talking about, asked Ding Jing Shi Tai. Zhang Zhen said, The big matter is the one that I've just raised before. The matter of combining the Five Mountains Sword Alliance into one. Ding Jing Shi Tai suddenly stood up and her complexion turned green. She stuttered, Pew, pew, pew. Zhang Zhen just smiled slightly and said, Shi Tai, please don't misunderstand. I am not taking advantage of someone in a precarious position. I'm just compelling Shi Tai to agree to this matter. Ding Jing Shi Tai indignantly said, You said it yourself. This is not taking advantage of some. If this is not taking advantage of someone in a precarious position, then what is it? Zhang Zhen answered, You're from Hangshan School. I'm from Songshan School. When your school is facing a problem, of course, my school is also concerned. After all, this is a matter of life and death. Of course, I'm willing to help Shi Tai with all my power, but I don't know if my martial brothers and martial nephews would be willing to do so. If the two schools have merged into one, then this problem would become our, our school's problem. Then they would have no more excuses. Ding Jing Shi Tai said, According to what you said, if my Hangshan school doesn't merge with your school, then you would just sit on your hands and be a spectator regarding the matter of Hangshan school's missing disciples? Dong Zhen said, It can't be said like that. I've been ordered by Marshall Brother to catch up with Shi Tai to discuss this matter, so other matters much must wait before Marshall Brothers' order is completed. That's why I wouldn't dare to handle this matter carelessly. Shu Tai, please, don't blame us. Oh, he's holding them hostage. Like, like their plan is, okay, they, okay, it's political, right? They really want the schools to merge. This is the reason they're here. Ding Jing Shu Tai's face had gone completely pale. She coldly said, This poor nun can't take the responsibility for making the decision regarding the merging of our two schools. Even if I agree to this, but my school's martial sisters don't agree, then everything would have been in vain. 
Zhang Zhen leaned forward and whispered, If Shi Tai agrees, then Ding Xian Shi Tai can't disagree. Originally, the leader of each school and each faction has always been held by the first disciple. Looking at Shi Tai's attitude, martial art, and also your position in the school, Shi Tai deserves to be the leader of the Hangshan school. Suddenly, Ding Qing Shi Tai slapped the table and broke it. She fiercely retorted, You want to sow dissension? I was the one who requested my deceased master, that Marshal's sister, be the leader of our school. It was also me who persuaded Marshal's sister Ding Xian to take up the position. If Ding Jing wanted to be the leader of the school, then I would have done it during that time, instead of using other people to incite it now. Zhang Zhen sighed and said, ah, What Brother Zhuo said wasn't wrong. What did he say? Zhang Zhen said, before we went south, Brother Zhuo said, The conduct of Hangshan schools is Ding Jing Shu Tai is too good. Her martial art is also extremely high, and she's admired by everyone. But it's a pity that she always fails to see the larger issue. I asked him why he said these words, and he answered, I have known Ding Jing Shu Tai's manner for some time. She's naturally aloof from worldly affairs and doesn't cherish unwanted reputation. On common matters, she's happy not to pay attention to them. If you ask her about this matter of combining the five schools, then you'll certainly meet with this problem. This matter actually concerns a lot of things. We know that we wouldn't be able to handle it by ourselves, but we're still going to try. If Ding Jing Shi Tai is only concerned about yourself and ignore the thousands of lives from the, from the orthodox schools who are in danger, then the Wulin realm will fall under a disaster, and there's nothing we can do. Precarious? Precarious means dangerous, like a dangerous position. Zhang Zhen said, Wait, wait. Ding Jing Shi Tai stood up and coldly said, You cleverly took this opportunity to say many honeyed words, but they're all completely useless to me. Songshan School has taken this path. You're not only taking advantage of someone in a precarious situation, but also hitting a person when she is down. Zhang Zhen said, Shu Tai, you're wrong. If Shu Tai agrees to this matter and let the people in Wulin know about this, it will facilitate our Songshan, Hangshan, Taishan, Huashan, and Hangshan five mountains to merge together. Then the Shangshan school will definitely support Shi Tai to become our Five Mountains school leader. So you can see clearly that our brother Zhuo is sincere and doesn't have any personal ambition. Ling Jing Shi Tai shook her hand and continuously and shouted, Say no more. My ear is already drowning in filth. She put her hand together and pushed them out. A noisy pung sound was heard as two boards were blown away by her qi. She moved quickly and in no time was already outside the Xian An Inn. What's up, Lee Rams? Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're not late. You're just in time. So they want to use this situation. They wanted to use this situation to to force her to join uh join the schools, so like merge the schools. <clears throat> when she was out of the door, it, the calm wind caressed and cooled her red-hot face. She considered that surname Zhang said that the devil sect has a lair near Nianbapu town. The missing disciples must be there. I don't know how much of what he said is true and how much is false. Then she walked away undecidedly without a plan. Walking alone, she looked at her own long shadow, reflected on the slab stone as the moon lowered in the sky. After walking for some distance, she stopped and thought, I only have my own prow power to rely on, just by myself. I won't be able to save my disciples. The old grand heroes had always been able to adjust themselves to any situation. Why didn't I just temporarily agree to that guy Zhong? After we've saved my disciples, I could immediately cut my own throat to thank them and teach him that with my death, he will have no proof of the agreement. 
he would only be able to announce that I've eaten my own words and dirty my name. This I'm willing to bear by myself. She sighed, thinking about this. Then she turned around and slowly walked back to Xian Xia Inn. Suddenly, she heard someone shouting from the end of the long street. Your granny, General, wants to drink wine and get some sleep. Your gran- Wait, okay, I know who this is. Your granny, General, wants to drink wine and get some sleep. Your granny, shop servants, why don't you quickly open the door? It was just yesterday at Xian Xia Mountain Range that she met with General Wu Tiande. So this is Ling Hu Chong in disguise, remember. When Ding Jing Shu Tai heard his voice, it was like a drowning person catching a big lumber. I think I mean a big log. Yesterday, Ling Hu Chong had helped Hang Shan School escape from danger at the top of Xian Xia Mountain Range. Feeling proud of himself, he hurried along the road and arrived at Nian Ba Pu Town. Okay, so now we're getting the perspective of Ling Hu Chong. We're back to our hero. He then quickly found a restaurant and went in. He shouted, bring out the wine. When the, rest, when the servants saw that it was a general who had entered the shop, they didn't dare to be slow and lazy. They quickly poured the wine, cooked the rice, killed the chicken, and sliced the beef. They were very, being very respectful. Oh, well, that's fresh chicken right there. They were being very respectful towards him and were standing at attention and serving him attentively. Ling Hu Chong became slightly drunk after many bowls of wine. In his heart, he was thinking, the devil sect has suffered a great setback this time, but they probably wouldn't be resigned to it. Nineteen people are still enough to cause trouble for the Hang Shan school. Ding Jing Shu Tai is foolhardy and isn't, devil sect, isn't the devil sex's match, so I must look after them in secret. After he had paid for his meal and wine, he went to the Xian'an Inn to sleep. He woke up at noon to wash his face when he suddenly heard people shouting on the street. Huang Feng Jai's people from Chaos Stone Mound are coming to Nian Ba Pu to plunder the town. They will kill every person they meet. They will take all the money they see. They will kill every person they meet. Wait, did I just read that again? <laughs> I just read the same sentence. Everyone quickly run away to save your life. The shouting could be heard from, from everywhere. The servant at the inn screamed, General, General, there's a bad thing coming. Ling Hu Chang inquired, Your granny, what bad thing is coming? General, Huang Feng Jai's men from Chaos Stone Mound are coming. They're coming to plunder the town tonight. Everyone is escaping already, replied the servant. <clears throat> Ling Hu Chong opened his room's door and scolded. Your granny, today is a sunny day. The sky is clear. How can there be robbers? General is right here. Do they still dare to plunder? That servant had a bitter expression on his face, but he still answered. Those robbers, they're fierce. They're very fierce. They, they also don't know, General, that you, that you are here. Ling Hu Chong said, you go tell them then. I, I, I'm only a nobody. I wouldn't dare to go and tell them. They'll chop my head off. What kind of a place is Huang Feng Jai's chaos stone mound? Wait. What kind of a place is Huang Feng Jai's chaos stone mound? I don't know what kind of place chaos stone mound is. I've, I've never heard of it before. I only know Huang Feng Jai's people are very fierce. Two days ago, they plundered a town 30 li north of Nian Ba Pu called Rong Shu To. They killed 60 to 70 people and burned more than 100 houses there. General, you, although your martial art is high, your two hands wouldn't find it, would find it difficult to fight four hands, not counting their big leader. I heard that they have more than 300 people. <clears throat> Ling Hu Chong scolded. Your granny, so what if they have 300 people? When general fights a battle with a thousand people and ten thousand horses, then when seven people enter the battle, seven people will come out alive. Eight people enter the battle, then eight people come out alive. I did not get that at all. What? What 
What does that mean? Yeah, I don't know what that means. I'm going to chalk that up to a translation error. <laughs> Grammar. The servant said, yes, yes, and turned around to quickly go out. The situation outside was already in chaos. People were calling out to each other in Zhu Qiang's speech, but in Fu Zhan's dialect. Ling Hu Chong couldn't understand completely what, ha what was being said. Could, he could only guess they were saying something like, Ah Mao's mom, have you taken the quilt yet? Or Da Bao, Xiao Bao, hurry up, the robbers are coming. When he walked outside, he saw tens of people carrying bundles behind their backs and baskets on their hands. They were going south to, es to escape. Ling Hu Chang thought, this is Zhe Jiang's boundary. Uh, Hang Zhou and Fu Zhou's generals aren't taking care of this area, causing the robbers to create chaos here and hurt the common people. My, Chang, my Quan Zhou's big general Wu Tiande is here already, so I can't just sit back and do nothing. Killing those robbers as leaders would be an accomplishment. This is called feeding him good fortune and being loyal. You're a granny, why not? Ha ha ha. After this train of thoughts arrived at his, after his train of thoughts arrived at this conclusion, he couldn't help but laugh continuously. He called out, "Servants, bring out the wine. General wants to drink wine before killing some thieves." But at that moment, everyone inside, from the guest shop, from the guests to the shop owner, the shop owner's wife, second aunt, third aunt, as well as the shop servants and the cooks, were all going out of the inn one by one. They only slowed down a step when they heard his voice, but then continued their escape, afraid of the coming robbers. Ling Hu Chong kept calling them, but no one paid any attention to him. Ling Hu Chong couldn't stand it anymore, so he went to the kitchen himself to fetch the wine. He then sat in the main hall and poured himself some wine. Next, he heard the sounds of chickens, dogs, horses, and pigs. He guessed that the townspeople were taking all these animals to escape with them. After a moment, it gradually became quieter. He drank three more bowls of wine, and by then, all the frightened and anxious sounds were gone. The town had become completely quiet. He thought, bad luck for Hong Feng Jai's people. I don't know where the townspeople got the news from, but when the robbers got here, they wouldn't have anything to plunder. He was the only remaining person now in this big town. He found the silence really strange and was feeling quite lonely. Suddenly, he heard the sound of horses galloping in the distance. There were four horses coming from the south in a rush. Ling Hu Chang thought, the robbers have arrived, but how come there's only a few people? The four horses galloped down the street, making a jung jung sound when the horseshoes hit the stone slabs on the road. You guys know um, Monty Python? You guys, have you guys watched uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail? Whenever I hear horseshoes, like whenever uh, I think about horseshoes hitting stone slabs, I think about uh, that scene where the guy had two cups. And he's like, he's like knocking it together to make it sound like horseshoes. <laughs> Like cluck cluck cluck. A person shouted, Nyan Baopu people, listen to Chaos Stone Mound, Huang Feng Jai's order. All males, females, you're old and young, get out of town. We won't kill you if you're outside. Everyone who stays inside will be chopped to death. They were shouting continuously while their horses galloped down the street. Ling Hu Chang went to the main door and opened it to crack to have a look. But the horses had gone past, and he was only able to see the back of the people riding the horses. He thought, this is not right. Looking at those people riding, it's clear that they know some martial arts. How can the bandits have this kind of people? He pushed the door open and walked out. After walking for more than 100 feet, he still couldn't see anyone around. Then he saw a scholar tree on the side of the road its branches and leaves luxuriant. He quickly went up the tree and sat on the highest branch. There was no sound at all around him. He waited up there for a long time, knowing that something was not right. Hong Feng Jai's people had, gone, had come a long time ago, but his big group 
Phil had not come yet. Could it be that some of the robbers came here to notify the townspeople to escape? <clears throat> oh, was he using coconuts, not cups? Oh yeah, because they wouldn't have cups back in those days, right? He used coconuts. Yeah. All right, uh, five minute break, you guys, and then I'll be right back. Ugh. Yeah, so I ran out of alcohol last week, so I had to drink, uh, mm -hmm. I had like a a tequila bottle left, so I had to drink that last time. It was nasty. So today I bought some wine. Look at this. This is a Zinfandel. Yeah. I say that. Be I say that as if I know what it is. I'm not a wine person. Well, this looks pretty good. It's a red wine this time. Cheers. That tastes like um red wine. Oh. All right. What drama was that song from? That was from... It was called the Zoo Mountain Saga. Yeah. It was really old. Super, super old. <clears throat> Alright, so it looks like uh, we're now back at Ling Hu Chong's perspective, right? And this was the day before, so he's... He's clearly in that town, so we find out um, what happened. We're gonna find out what happened in that town. <clears throat> After he had been waiting for an hour, he faintly heard some voices. It was the chirping of females' voices. With rapt attention, he heard a few sentences. From the sentences, he knew that it was the Hung Shan School's disciples. He thought, how come they arrived here at this time? Oh, they must have spent the day resting on the mountain. He heard them knocking on the Xian An Inn's door, and then went to another inn to knock on that door. There was a quite a bit of distance between Nan An Inn and the Scholar Tree, so when the Hung Shan School people entered the inn, he, he couldn't hear or see what they were doing in there. <clears throat> he secretly felt, in all likelihood, this is the devil sex's trap to ambush Hung, the Hangshan school people. At the moment, he was still concealed on top of the tree, calmly waiting for something to happen. After waiting for a long time, he saw Yi Ching and the and, wait, he saw Yi Ching and six disciples go out of the inn to light up the lamps. The whole street was now lit up by the lights from the house's windows. After another moment, he heard he suddenly heard the voice of a female shouting, "Help!" Ling Hu Chang was startled. Ayo, this is not good. Hang Shan school disciples have met the devil sex's treachery. <clears throat> he immediately jumped down from the tree and went to the house where the scream came from. He looked inside the house from a crack in the window, but there was no light in there, and only the pale light from the moon was coming in through the window. He saw seven or eight men standing against the wall, and one female and one female standing in the middle of the room. She shouted, Help! Help! Someone's murdered! Ling Hu Chong looked at the side of her face and noticed that her expression was fierce. It was fierce. It was obvious that they were waiting to ambush people. Oh, it's a trap. That was, the, that was a help help that we heard in the last chapter. 
<clears throat> that the Hangshan disciples heard. Uh, I'll need a bottle of tequila when that bottle runs out. I bought three bottles of wine, so it's going to last a while. <laughs> I bought a red one, a white wine, and then uh, a rosé. Hmm. I like, I like rosés, actually. They have more flavor. As expected, as she just finished calling out, a female disciple outside the house shouted, Who has committed murder here? The house's door was pushed open, and seven females jumped inside. One of them was Yi Ching. These seven disciples were each holding a longsword in hand, thinking they were going to save someone. Suddenly, that female, who shouted for help before, threw out her right hand and hurled open a roughly four square feet of green cloth. Yi Ching and the other six disciples started to tremble. It looks like they were dizzy when they started to turn around in circles and dropped down. Ling Hu Chong was alarmed, and he felt shock through his heart. Wait, what? Ling Hu Chong was alarmed, and he felt shocked through his heart. That woman's green cloth must have some kind of confusion poison in it. If I go in to save them, then I'll also fall into their trap. I can only wait and watch what happens for now. Those men on the wall quickly crouched around, took, so, took out some rope, and started binding Yi Ching and the other disciples' hands and feet. Not long after, another female shouted sharply from outside, What kind of person is here? Wait. <clears throat> well, I think, wait. I think Ling Hu Chong says that. What kind of... Oh, no, no. no, I think the... F f uh, that, that woman said that. That woman said this. Okay. Not long after, another female shouted sharply from outside. What kind of person is here? When Ling Hu Chong passed through the Xianxia mountain range, he had met with this bad-tempered nun and also chatted with her. He knew that Yi Hu was the own, was the one out there. Okay, okay, so that's the nun. He knew that Yi Hu was the one out there. He thought you are really hot tempered. This time you'll become rice dumpling again. He heard Yi Hu shouted again, "Sister Yi Ching, are you here?" And a pung sound was heard as she kicked the door open. Yi Hu and another disciple went forward shoulder to shoulder. As they stepped inside the house, they waved their swords around separately on their left and right sides, protecting themselves from an enemy's attack. At the same time, the other five disciples were walking backwards into the house and were also waving their swords around. When the two of, when the, two of the disciples got inside the house, the woman and her cohorts held their breath and stopped moving completely. Once all seven of the disciples were inside the house, that woman hurled open her green cloth again and the disciples were again confused before collapsing to the ground. They were followed by Yu Sao's group, which also fell into the same trap. <laughs> They're all falling into the same trap? Come on! There were now 21 of the Hangshan school disciples that have lost consciousness and tied up at the corner of the house. After a while, an old man in their group made some hand signals, and they quietly retreated from the house's back door. <clears throat> Ling Hu Chong jumped to the roof and crouched down. He was following them for a short distance when he suddenly heard sounds of flapping clothes from the house in front. The sound was coming from the roof ridge of the house. He saw ten men hand signaling to each other. They were all concealed from the street while seated on the side of the roof ridge. His current hiding place was only tens of feet away from them. Ling Hu Chong slid down the wall quietly when he saw Ding Jing Shi Tai coming to this area, leading the three disciples. Ling Hu Chong thought, This isn't good. This is using luring the tiger, leaving the mountain tactic. Those nuns left at the Nanan Inn will be in trouble. In the distance, he saw shadows moving hurriedly towards the Nanan Inn. 
What he thought before had become a reality. Suddenly he heard someone whispering, Delay that old nun from coming over. The seven of you, entertain her here. This voice came from above his head, so Ling Hu Chong couldn't move at all or he would be discovered. So he flattened his back on the wall and didn't move at all. He heard Ding Jing Shu Tai kick open the door and call out, Yi here, Yi Ching, Yu Sao, do you hear me? Her voice traveled far, and then she saw her going around the house and jumping onto the roof, but she didn't look carefully inside. Ling Hu Chong thought, What is she doing? Why isn't she going inside the house to have a look? Once she goes in, then she'll see the 21 female disciples tied up on the ground. He realized immediately, It's actually good that she's not going in. Those devil sect people are on the roof waiting for her to enter the house. Then they'll immediately surround her from four directions. That's like capturing a turtle in an urn. He saw Ding Jing Shu Tai going there and there and there. Wait. He saw Ding Jing Shu Tai going here and there, realizing that she didn't know what to do. Suddenly he went quickly. Suddenly she went quickly towards Nan An In, and those three disciples couldn't keep up with her. As that happened, a lot of people turned up from the side of the street and hurled that green cloth open. Those three disciples immediately collapsed and they were dragged inside a house. With the pale light from the moon, he could blur, blurrily see that Yi Lin was among those three people. Ling Hu Chang quickly thought, Should I quickly go and save little Marshall's sister, Yi Lin? And another thought quickly followed, I'm only by myself, and the fight will be big. The devil sect has captured so many of the Hangshan schools' people, I must be careful to not not to harm them while I'm taking care of the devil sect people. I can't fight in front of them, so I must still do this in secret. He saw Ding Jing Shu Tai come out of the Nanan -an Inn and started to scold the devil sect in the middle of the street. She Then she went up to the roof and started scolding Dong Fang Bu Bai. As expected, the devil sect people couldn't bear this anymore, and seven people went up to fight her. When Ling Hu Chong saw this, he pondered, Ding Jing Shu Tai's sword art is refined and deep. Even one against seven, she would be able to hold them out. She would be able to hold them out for some time. I'll go save Marshall's sister Yi Lin first. Yay, my hero. Yi Lin's gonna love that. <clears throat> His body moved like lightning entering the house. He saw a person in the main hall holding a saber and the three disciples tied up on the ground beside him. Ling Hu Chong jumped forward and took out his Yao Dao saber. Then, using his sheath saber, he stabbed it toward that person's throat. That person didn't even react before he died. Ling Hu Chong was dumbfounded. How come my sword is so fast? I just extended my hand and it already reached his throat? He himself didn't know that ever since he practiced the art of essence absorbing, the internal energies of the Peach Valley Six Fairies, Monk No Commandment and Mr. Black White had become his own internal energy to use. His initial idea that once he stabbed with his saber, then the enemy would raise his own saber to block, and then he would use his sheath saber to hit his enemy's legs to drop him on the ground. Then he would be able to save the three martial sisters. Unexpectedly, his enemy didn't even have time to raise his saber before he got hit and killed. Ling Hu Chong felt apologetic as he dragged the dead man away. Then he looked down. He saw that Yi Lin was among the three female disciples lying on the ground. He extended his hand to check her breathing and found her breathing evenly. Except for being unconscious, she was otherwise unharmed. He quickly went to the kitchen to fetch a ladle of cold water and splashed it on her face. In a little while, Yi Lin woke up and groaned slightly. At the beginning, she didn't know that she was on the ground. She opened her eyes and suddenly realized what had happened. She quickly jumped up and wanted to draw her sword, but both of her hands and feet were tied up and she fell back down. Ling Hu Chang said, Little Shu Tai, don't be afraid. That bad person has been killed by General. He then used his saber to cut away the ropes, binding her hands and feet. In the darkness, Yi Lin heard his voice and it was that person, Big Brother Ling Hu, that she had been thinking of day and night. Oh no. She was alarmed and happy at the same time. She called out, You, you are Ling Hu, big. 
This word brother wasn't said when she thought that it wasn't right. Her whole face turned red and she quietly whispered, Who, who are you? Ling Chang heard her recognizing him and then correcting herself. He whispered, General is here. Those small-time thieves wouldn't dare to bully you anymore. Ah, so it's General Wu. How about, how about my, my martial uncle? Asked Yilin. She's outside fighting with the enemies. Let's go out and take a look, said Ling Chong. Sister Chung, Sister Chin, said Yilin. She took out from her bosom a fire stick and lighted it up. She saw her two disciple sisters lying on the ground. She said, ah, they're all here. She wanted to cut ropes, cut the ropes on their hands and feet. But Ling Hu Chong said, Don't bother. Helping your martial uncle is more important at the moment. Yilin said, That's true. Ling Hu Chong turned around and went outside with Yilin following behind. They had just walked several steps when they saw those seven enemies fleeing. They heard, then they heard the projectiles being deflected and someone praising how high Ding Jing Shu Tai's sword art is. Ding Jing Shu Tai recognized that the person is from the Songshan school. Not long after that, he saw Ding Jing Shu Tai following those men to go into Xian An Inn. Ling Hu Chong signaled to Yilin to follow him to the inn and hid outside the window to eavesdrop. They heard Ding Jing Shu Tai chatting with Zhang Zhen inside the room. That person surnamed that person surnamed Zhang wanted Ding Jing Shu Tai to agree to the merging of the Hangshan school first before they would help save her disciples. Ling Hu Chang heard him harboring evil intentions and taking advantage of someone who was already down. He secretly felt angry. He also heard Ding Jing Shu Tai getting more and more angry as Zhang Zhen said more words until she finally jumped out of the inn. <clears throat> Oh, hey, Ashley, thank you so much. Yeah, you're planning to visit Japan? Well, have fun. It's, uh, yeah, it's a great place for, for, uh, for a visit. I know, right? She's like thinking of Ling Hu Chong day and night. She is very thirsty. She is very lovesick. Ling Hu Chong waited for Ding Jing Shu Tai to go a bit further before he went down and knocked on Xian An In's door. He shouted, Your granny, General wants to drink wine and sleep. Your granny's shop servants, why don't you quickly open the door? It was just at that time that Ding Jing Shu Tai had run out of ideas when she heard this general's shout. She felt really happy and quickly went over. Yi, Yi Lin went up to welcome her and called out, Marshal Uncle! Ding Jing Shu Tai felt even happier. She hastily asked, Where did you go before? Yilin answered, I was captured by devil sect demons. The general rescued me. At this time, Ling Hu Chang had pushed open the door and walked in. Inside the main hall was two candles lighted up, and Zhang Zhen was sitting in the middle of the hall. Zhang Zhen gloomily said, Who's making all those noises? Come out, quickly. Ling Hu Chang scolded him. Your granny, this general, this is general working for the government court. You still have the guts to speak out? Shopkeeper, boss's wife, servants, quickly, come out. Songshan school people heard him scolding and then asking for the shopkeeper and the boss's wife. It was obvious to them that he looked fierce on the outside, but soft on the inside, and that he was feeling afraid in his heart. They all found it funny. Zhang Zhen was still thinking about the big matter in his heart when this government dog came in the middle of the night. He quietly said, Get rid of this chap, but don't kill him. Bright hair lion Gao Ku Xin nodded his head. He then laughed aloud and went towards Ling Hu Chong. He said, So? So it's granddad from the government. Pardon me for not paying respect. It's already good that you know. You people are only ordinary folks, so you don't know any rules, said Ling Hu Chang. Gao Ku Xin laughed, <laughs> yes, yes, and in a flash, his body was in front of Ling Hu Chang. He extended his forefinger and stabbed it towards Ling Hu Chang's waist. Ling Hu Chang saw where he was aiming at, and he quickly concentrated his internal energy at his waist. Gao Ku Xin's stab found Ling Hu Chang's laughing acupoint. 
When an opponent was hit at this point, he would laugh loudly once and would immediately lose consciousness. To his surprise, Ling Hu Chong just giggled once and said, You're not following any rules. What kind of a joke are you playing with, General, moving your hands and feet about? Gao Kusin was greatly surprised, but he already executed his second stab. This time, he was using all of his power in his stab. Ling Hu Chong laughed loudly and jumped up. He laughingly scolded him. Your granny, what are you doing rubbing the general's waist? Do you want to still steal some silvers? Huh, you look solemn, handsome, and intelligent, but you're actually, you're an unlearned man. Gao Ku Xin's left hand shot out to grab Ling Hu Chong's right wrist, and he was going to use his right hand to fling him down to the ground. Unexpectedly, as his hand touched Ling Hu Chong's wrist, his internal energy started to rush out of his body, and he couldn't stop it. Oh, he's sucking his power. He couldn't help but be completely frightened. He wanted to shout, but even when his mouth was opened wide, no sound was coming out. Ling Hu Chong was aware that his opponent's internal energy was being absorbed into his body. It was just like that day when he grabbed Mr. Black White's wrist. He was alarmed. I can't use this demonical method. He quickly flinged Gao Kusin away, breaking the contact. It seems like whenever someone touches him, they, uh, they get their, 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 uh, their chi absorbed by, by Ling Hu Chong. Oh, hey, what's up, Nitro? Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah, that's the laughing point. <laughs> That's the laughing acu point. When when someone hits you there, you uh you you laugh, and then you fall unconscious. Apparently. Gao Kusin felt as if he had received a king's pardon as he was stupidly thrown down. He quickly stood up, but felt weak all over, as if he had just recovered from a big illness. He shouted, "Art of essence absorbing art." Art of essence absorbing! His shout came out as more of a hiss, but it was full of fear. Zhang Zhen, Deng Ba Gong, and the rest of the Songshan school disciples jumped up at the same time and asked, What? Gao Kusin stammered, This this person is using art, art of essence absorbing. All of a sudden, the room was filled with lights flickering off swords as everyone drew their long swords out from their scabbards, while divine whip Deng Ba Gong held a whip in his hand. Zhang Zhen's sword art was the fastest. Under the trembling cold light of the room, the reflective light of his sword had already pierced Ling Hu Chang's throat. When that Gao Kusin shouted, Ling Hu Chang already anticipated that, Song Shan, that the Songshan school people would immediately gang up on him, and they were now thrusting their swords toward him. But as they were pulling their swords out, Ling Hu Chang also pulled his Yao Dao saber along with its sheath out from his waist and used it like a long sword. His hand shook slightly at the his hand shook lightly and the back of everyone's hand was hit and chang lang shang sounds were heard. The noise had not the chang the chang lang noise had not stopped yet when all of the swords were dropped on the ground. Zhang Zhang's martial arts was the highest, even though the back of his hand had been hit by Ling Hu Chang's scabbard, he still managed to hold on to it. He was frightened and jumped back. Deng Ba Gong was distressed and let go of the whip's handle, which made the whip lash up and wrap around his neck, restricting him from drawing any breath. Zhang Zhen was leaning his back against the wall, and his face had lost all color. A well-known in Jiang Hu, Devil Sex's Chief Run resurfaces. You, you are Chief Run. Are you Run Wa Xing? So yeah, Chief Run is remember the the guy who was in the prison in the, like two chapters ago, or a few chapters ago. Yeah, he was he was he's the other one who knows uh, the art of essence absorbing. So they he's like, oh, are you are you that guy? Ling Hu Chang laughed. Your granny, what Run Wo Sing, Run Ni Sing, General won't change his surname and won't change his name either. My surname is Wu. My name is Tian De. From which mound did you come from? Are you that whatever Zai's small time thieves? 
Zhang Zhen clasped both his hands. Sir, you have re-entered Jianghu. Zhang knows that I'm not your match, so I'm going. He jumps through the window to get out. Gao Kuxin followed him and jumped out the window too. Then, one by one, they all jumped out through the window. Although the floor was full of long swords, none of them dared to take any of them. Now they're really scared of this dude. Ling Hu Chang le Ling Hu Chang's left hand was now holding the scabbard, while his right hand was holding the saber's his handle. He then used his strength to pull on the handle a few times, but that saber never came out from its sheath. He said, The rust on this treasured saber is really bad. I should go look for a grindstone and to sharpen it. Ding Jing Shi Tai clasped her hands and asked, General Wu, how do we save my disciples? <clears throat> Ling Huchong expected that as soon as Zhang Zhen and his people went away, no one would be able to match Ding Jing Shi Tai's divine sword. He replied, General wants to drink a few bowls of wine here. Old Shi Tai, do you want to drink wine too? When Yilin heard him talking about drinking wine again, she thought, if this general meets with Big Brother Ling Hu, they would certainly become drinking buddies. But she cannot stop thinking about him, can she? As she took a peep at him, she saw that the general was staring at her. Her face turned slightly red, and she lowered her head. Ding Jing Shi Tai said, Forgive me, poor nun doesn't drink wine. General, I won't accompany you. She clasped her hands again and then turned around to leave. Yilin followed her out, but when she reached the door, she couldn't help but to take another look at him. She saw him looking for wine and calling out in a loud voice, Your granny, all the people in the inn have all disappeared. How come those servants are still not coming out? She thought, His voice sounds similar to Big Brother Ling Hu's, but whenever this general speaks, he's very vulgar. Every sentence he has to mention his whatever. Big Brother Ling Hu isn't like that at all. His martial arts is also much higher compared to Big Brother Ling Hu. I, I must be imagining things. Uh, I must be. Ling Hu Chong had finally found some wine, and he immediately gulped it down. He thought, when these nuns, grannies, and ladies come back, they'll talk nonstop, and I'll have to endure it for sure. It's better if I just run away before then. Saving these people would take around an hour, and my tummy would be very hungry by that time. It's better if I find something to eat first. <clears throat> After he finished a pot of wine, he went to the kitchen, looking for something to eat. Suddenly he heard from somewhere far away, Yi Lin sharply shouting, Marshal Uncle! Marshal Uncle! Where are you? She sounded frightened. Ling Huchang hurriedly rushed out of the inn and followed the voice. When he got there, he saw Yi Lin and two young ladies standing on the street. <coughs> they were calling out, Marshal Uncle, Master. Ling Huchang asked, What happened? Yi Lin answered, I, I went to wake Marshal Sister Zheng and Marshal Sister Qin. Marshal, sis Marshal Uncle was concerned about the other Marshal sisters, so she went ahead to rescue them. But when we got out, maybe we don't know where she has gone to. Ling Huchang saw that Zheng Yu was around 21 to... 21 to? <laughs> I think he means 21 to 22 years old. Um, Ling Huchong saw that Zheng Yu was around 21 to 22 years old, while Qin Chuan was even younger, looking like 15 or 16 years old. He thought, I haven't seen these young ladies before. What's Hang Shan School doing sending them out to come here? He smiled, I know where they are, come with me. He walked quickly to the northeast, towards the house where the disciples were captured earlier. When he arrived at the house with the broken door, he was afraid that the woman with the confusing drugs was still inside, ready to ambush them. He said, Use your handkerchiefs to cover your mouth and nose. There's a smelly granny inside who releases poison. He pinched his nose using his left hand and shut his lips all tightly. Then he rushed into the house. When he reached the main hall, he was dumbfounded. Previously, the main hall was full of Hong Shan school female disciples, but now, there wasn't a single trace of them. He was surprised. Where was a candle lighting? There was a candle lighting up the hall, but the hall was totally empty. 
Where did they go? He searched every room in the house, but found nothing unusual. He called out, There's something strange here. Yilin, Zheng E, and Qin Chuan's eyes were wide open, looking at him, their faces full of doubt. Ling Hu Shang said, Your granny, your martial sisters were right here, and old granny had poisoned them all, and then they were tied up right here. How come they're all gone now? Zheng E asked, General Wu, when you saw our martial sisters being poisoned, was it really here? Ling Hu Chang asked, Last, uh, uh, Ling Hu Chang answered, Last night when I was sleeping, I had a dream. I saw with my eyes many old nuns, about seven or eight of them, lying there. Uh, how can it be wrong? Zhang He said, Pew, pew. She wanted to say that it was his dream, so how can it be accurate? But she knew that he liked to speak nonsense. He said that it was a dream, but he probably saw it with his own eyes. So she quickly corrected herself. Where do you think they've all gone to? Ling Hu Chang hummed deeply. Hmm... I'm not sure where I can find big fishes and big meat. I think they've all gone to have a feast. Or maybe the place where there's opera. They're watching opera. He moved his hands around and continued, You three are small girls, so it's better if you stay close behind me. If you want to eat meat or watch opera, we'll do it later. Although Jin Chuan was still young, she knew the situation was really dangerous. Her other martial sisters had all fallen into the enemies' hands. While this general blindly said some nice words, she knew they were all not true. Tens of Hangshan school disciples had gone out, but now only three of them remained. Except for listening to this general's order, she had no other option. She followed the general outside along with Yi Lin and Zheng E. Ling Hu Chang was talking to himself. Could it be that I saw the wrong people in my dream last night? Tonight, I won't be able to have such a good dream again. But in his heart, he was thinking, the other female disciples must have been moved away. But how come Ding Jing Xiu Tai had also disappeared? I'm afraid she might have met the enemy by herself and chased them. Hmm. It wouldn't be appropriate to leave Yi Lin and these two in Nyamba Pu town. I'd better take them along. He said, we don't have anything to do right now. Well, why don't we go and look for your martial uncle and see where she's playing? What do you think? Zheng E answered, That's extremely good. Uh, General's martial art is high and your experience is vast. If General doesn't lead the three of us in looking for martial uncle, then I'm afraid it would be very difficult for us to find them. Ling Hu Chong laughed. Martial art is high and experience is vast. You're not wrong in saying these eight words. In the future, when the general hangs up his command and got a promotion and got rich, then I'll send the three of you 100, 200 shining silver tails to buy clothes to wear. As he was talking nonstop, they reached the end of Nyambapu town. He then jumped onto a roof and looked at the four directions. At this time, the morning sun was already above the horizon. The white fog filled the air, and above the, th uh, and above the treetops, the sky was cloudy. He gazed far, but there was no one on the two main roads. Suddenly, he saw an object on the main road to the south. He couldn't see clearly what it was because of the distance, but when the whole road was empty, and an item was in the middle of the street like this, then it would definitely catch the attention of your eyes. He jumped down from the roof and quickly went to where that object was. Once he got there, he picked it up. It was a female shoe. Apparently, it was identical to the one Yilin was wearing. He waited for Yilin and the other two girls to arrive. He gave the shoe to her and asked, Is this your shoe? Uh, how come it's here? Yilin received the shoe and realized it was the same type of shoe that she was wearing. She couldn't help but check her feet and saw that she was still wearing shoes. Zheng Er said, This, this is the one that our martial sisters wear. Uh, how did it end up here? Jin, Jin Chuan said, It must be one of martial sisters who were captured by the enemy. She must have struggled and dropped her shoe. Zheng Er, er, Zheng er replied, or she deliberately left the shoe behind to let us know. Ling Hu Chang said, Correct. Your martial art is high and your experience is vast. Should we go chase to the south or to the north? Zheng Er answered, Of course, to the south. 
Ling Hu Chang quickly started running to the south. At the beginning, the distance between him and the three girls wasn't that far, but as he went on, the distance became really far. Ling Hu Chang looked carefully along the road, and he frequently looked back to watch the three ladies. He was afraid that he might get too far and wouldn't be able to help them if needed, so he waited for them to catch up to him before he ran again. They had gone for more than ten li in this manner when he saw that the road in front was rugged. There were a lot of trees on both sides, providing a lot of places for enemies to hide in. If Yilin was captured while they were still on these parts of the road, he wouldn't be able to save her. After a long time, he saw Qin Chuan running towards him. Both of her cheeks were really red. He knew that she was still young and couldn't run for long distances. He decided to let them walk slowly for the moment. He said loudly, Your granny, if we keep running that fast, then General's leather boots will be worn through to the bottom. I can't let this happen. Why don't we just go slowly? After walking for around seven to eight li, Qin Chuan suddenly shouted, Yee! She crouched behind. Wait, she crouched besides a shrub on the side and picked up a cap. It was the cap that the Hangshan schools' people wore. <clears throat> Zhang Wu said, "General, it's one of our marshal sisters' caps. They must have gone through this road." The three girls quickly continued walking. They were going faster as they went. Ling Hu Chong was now behind them. At noon, the four of them found a restaurant on the road. The shop owner saw a general with a nun and two young girls with him. He was really surprised and repeatedly hit the sides of his head. Ling Hu Chong slapped the table and scolded, "Your granny! What are you looking at? You've never seen monks and nuns before." That man said, uh, "Yes, yes, I don't dare." Zhang Wu asked, Uncle, have you seen a few nuns passing by here? The man said, I haven't seen a few nuns, but I've seen one. One old Shi Tai passed by here. She was much older compared to this young Shi Tai here. Li Hu Shang shouted, You talk too much. The one old Shi Tai, then how could her age be younger than this little Shi Tai? No, that man said, Yes, yes. Zhang Wu impatiently said, asked, What happened to that old Shi Tai? The man answered, That old Shutai hastily asked me whether I've seen a few nuns passing by this road. I said no, and she just went, Hey, she's already old, but she was still running really fast. Uh, she was also holding a sword in her hand. She looked like she was going to play a part in an opera. Jin Chuan clapped her hands and said, That must be Master. Let's go quickly and chase her. Ling Hu Chong said, Don't rush. Uh, we'll eat first. The four people hastily ate their meals. Just before they left, Qin Chuan bought, bought four steamed rolls. She said she was giving it to Master to eat. Ling Hu Chang's heart turned sour. She's very filial. She's very filial towards her master. But for me, I can't even be filial to my master. They chased until the sky became dark, but they had not seen a trace of either Jing Jing Shi Tai or the Hang Shan Schools' disciples. They kept an eye on the field with thick, long grass, while the street was get getting narrower as they went. As they went further, the long grass was up to their waist, and they weren't able to see the road anymore. Suddenly, they heard some sounds of fighting coming from the northwest. Ling Hu Chang called out, There's some fighting going on there. Let's take a look. Qin Chuan said, Ai yo, maybe it's my master. Ling Hu Chang went to the direction of the noise. After going for several hundred feet, the surrounding area was suddenly bright. They saw tens of tall fire sticks around the area, and the sounds of fighting got noisier. He quickened his steps as he got near to the area. Then he saw tens of people holding the fire sticks in a circle. Inside that circle was a person with her big sleeve fit, flitting around and her long sword slashing around. It was Ding Jing Shu Tai. Outside the circle were tens of people lying down on the ground. With one look at their clothes, he knew that it was the Hangshan schools' female disciples. Ling Hu Chang saw that those people holding the fire sticks were wearing masks on, on their faces. He walked nearer to the circle step by step. At the moment, every person there had his attention on the fight, and no one saw him coming nearer. 
Ling Hu Chong laughed loudly and shouted, Seven against one, that's shameful. All those people with their faces covered were surprised to suddenly see him appear out of nowhere. They all turned their heads around to look at him. Only seven, only the seven people surrounding Ding Jing Shi Tai didn't hear him and they kept on fighting. All of them were attacking her upper body. Ling Hu Chang saw on Ding Jing Shi Tai's gown some splotches of fresh blood. He also saw blood splashed on her face. She was using her left hand to hold her sword. Obviously, her right hand had been injured. Oh no. At this time, someone shouted, Who are you? As a man jumped in front of Ling Hu Chong with both of his hands shaped in a knife form. Ling Hu Chong shouted, General has been going everywhere non-stop, but every day I have to meet you small-time thieves. Let's exchange names. General Saber here doesn't chop nameless people. A man laughed, so it's this muddled person, as he slashed his sword to chop Ling Hu Chong's leg off. Ling Hu Chong shouted, Ayo, you, <laughs> Ayo, you really using your saber? His body swayed as he charged into the group with his sheathed saber up. Seven continuous pa 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 was heard as seven people's wrists were hit. Seven weapons fell on the ground one after another. A chi sound was heard as Ding Jing Shu Tai's sword pierced into an enemy's chest. That person was startled as he couldn't avoid Ding Jing Shu Tai's lightning fast sword. Ding Jing Shu Tai swayed a few times, and as her legs couldn't support her anymore, she sat on the ground. Qin Chuan screamed, Master! Master! as she went towards her master to support her. One of the masked men lifted his saber and put it on a Hang Shan School's disciples' neck. He shouted, Retreat three steps. If you don't do as I say, I'll kill this woman first. Ling Hu Chong laughed. Very good, very good. If you want us to retreat, then we'll retreat. What's so strange about that? Don't say three steps. Even thirty steps is okay. Suddenly, he thrust his Yao Dao saber towards him, and the point of the scabbard hit his chest. That person cried out, Ai yo, as his body flew away. Ling Hu Chong was dumb. <laughs> wow. One hit and the guy's, the guy's body flew into the air. Ling Hu Chang was dumbfounded, as he didn't expect that his internal energy would be so strong. He again wielded his sheathed saber as he hit three more masked men, and shouted, You're still not retreating? I'm going to capture you, one by one, and have you sent to the government here. Everyone will get thirty planks. A plank is like a hit on the ass. Yeah, that was one of the punishments that they do back in the day. They would have you lie down and then they'll like smack you on the ass with a, with a plank, with a wooden plank. That's a, that's a government um, punishment. Yeah. The leader of those masked men saw that his martial art was high and was really amazing. He clasped his hand and said, we respect Chief Runs's good name. We'll back down. He waved his left hand and shouted again. The Devil Sex's Chief Run is here. Everyone be tactful. Let's go. They lifted the corpse and the four people who were hit before. They also threw the fire sticks down and retreated towards the northwest. In a short while, they were all gone from the field. Qin Chuan took out the Hang Shan School's medicine to apply to her master's wounds, while Yi Lin and Zheng E untied their martial sister's hands and feet. Four disciples then took up the fire sticks and gathered around Ding Jing Shi Tai. Everyone saw that her injuries were serious and all their faces had a worried expression. They all kept silent. Ding Jing Shi Tai's chest was continuously going up and down. She slowly opened her eyes and asked Ling Hu Chong, You, you, you are really the past... Devil Sex's chief run, Bo Xing? Ling Hu Chong shook his head, no. Ling Jing Shi Tai's eyes were losing its liveliness. She was expelling a lot of air, but inhaling very little air. It was obvious that she was having great difficulty breathing. She gasped a few times and suddenly, in a fierce voice, said, If you're Ran Wo Xing, 
Even if my Hangshan school is defeated to the ground and be destroyed, please don't, don't. As she said, as she said till here, she couldn't draw her breath. Ling Hu Chang saw that her life was in danger and didn't dare to talk nonsense anymore. He said, I'm still young. How can I be Ran Wo Sing? Ding Jing Shu Tai asked, Then how come you know, you know that art of essence absorbing? You're Ran Wo Sing's disciple. Ling Hu Chang remembered the day he was still at Hua Shan when Master and Master Wife mentioned de the devil sect. Uh, uh. Mentioned the devil sex's many evils. These past two days, he had seen with his own eyes the methods that the devil sex employed to attack the Hangshan school. He said, The devil sect has committed many evil acts. How can we still be make friends with them? That Ron Wo Sing isn't my master. Xu Tai, don't worry. My master is a benevolent and kind man. He's heroic and upright. In Wu Lin, he's looked up, uh, he's looked up by everyone. And consider to be a senior hero, Xu Tai has many relations with him. Ning Jing Xu Tai's face revealed a smiling expression. She said, "She said, then, then I won't worry anymore. I, I won't make it. I want to bother General to bring the Hangshan School's his disciples to, to." Her breathing hurried while she talked. After a moment, she said. Bring them to Fu Zhou's Wu Xiang Temple. Help them settle down. My school's is martial sisters. In a few days, they would arrive. Ling Hu Chang said, Shu Tai, don't worry. Just rest for a few days, and you'll recover. Do you agree? Ling Hu Chang saw her two eyes looking at him, full of hope, and her face was hoping for him to agree. She was afraid that he might not agree to her request. He said, I will definitely do as Xu Tai's request. Ding Jing Xu Tai smiled. Ami Tofu, I've been relieved of this burden. I'm not to be admired. Young hero, who are you really? Ling Hu Chang saw her eyes were unfocused, and her breath was very shallow. Her life wasn't long anymore. He couldn't conceal it anymore from her, so he put his mouth to her ear and said, Xu Tai, martial uncle. I am Hua Shan School's ex disciple, Ling Hu Chang. Ding Jing Xu Tai let out an ah and said, You, you, thank you, young hero, and held his hand, her eyes filled with gratitude. She couldn't draw a breath anymore, and her breathing stopped. Ling Hu Chang called out, Xu Tai, Xu Tai, as he checked her breath, but she had stopped breathing. He couldn't help but feel mournful. The Hangshan school's disciples started weeping wildly. The fire sticks were dropped onto the ground, and one by one, they were extinguished. All around them became really dark, Ling Hu Chang thought. Ding Jing Shu Tai was considered to be her generation's expert in martial art, but by accident, she had lost her life in tonight in this wilderness. She was only an old nun without anyone else to help her here. Can't the devil sect just let her go? Oh no, let's do bell toll for uh, Ding Jing Shu Tai. <clears throat> Suddenly he thought aloud. When that masked men's leader went, he said, when that masked men's leader went, he said, the devil sex's chief run is here. Everyone be ta tactful. Let's go. The devil sex's real name is the Sun Moon sect. And when they hear these two words, devil sect, they would feel really insulted. They often kill people who call their sect devil sect. So why did this person call his own sect the devil sect? Since he used the term, he must not be from the devil sect. So what's the real origin of this person? He heard the disciples sorrowfully crying, so he didn't disturb them. He leaned on a tree and slept. <clears throat> ah, it seems like those people were not from the devil sect at all. It seems, because they wouldn't call themselves devil sect, right? Yeah, so that's an insulting term for them. They usually call themselves the sun-moon sect, right? the sun-moon holy sect.
When he woke up in the morning, he saw a few senior disciples standing guard besides Ding Jing Shu Tai's corpse, while the young ladies and nuns slept behind uh, beside him. Ding Hu Chang thought, "This general has to take these women to Fuzhou. It'll look really odd and strange. Neither fish nor fowl. Also, I need to go to Fuzhou to look for master and master wife. I don't need to lead them. Just protecting them will do." He coughed and was just about to go. When Yi Hu, Yi Qing, Yi Ji, and Yi Zhen quickly went and clasped their hands to him and said, "Poor nuns were rescued by Hero. Thanks to Hero's his virtue and kindness, there's nothing we wouldn't do to repay Hero's kindness." Marshal Uncle had met a great uh, misfortune and, in her last breath, entrusted us to Hero. We're waiting for Hero to give us orders for us to follow. They no longer called him general, as they believed that this general was a brave person. Ling Huchang said, "What hero? This is not good to hear. When you look at me, just call me general." Yi Hu looked at the disciples. Yi Hu looked at the other disciples, and then they all nodded their heads. Ling Huchang said, "Last night I had a dream. In that dream, I saw an old granny poisoned all of you, and that you were all lying down inside a big house. How did you all get here?" Yu Hu answered, "We we didn't know what happened after we were poisoned and fell unconscious. They splashed cold water to wake us up all later, to wake us all up later. They 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 released the binds on our feet and led us out from the city through a small road. We didn't stop on the road as they kept pulling us, trying to hurry. When they when we walked a bit slow, those thieves whipped us. Even when night fell, we didn't stop." When then Marshal Uncle caught up with us, they surrounded her, telling her to surrender. When her narrative arrived at this point, she choked and tears started to drop again. Lin Huxiang said, "So there's another small road besides the main one. No wonder we couldn't find any trace of you at all." Yi Qing said, "General, our most important matter right now is to cremate Marshal Uncle's remains." Would you please show us how to do it? Ling Huchang shook his head. General doesn't know anything about the matters of monks or nuns. It'll be like a blind person leading you. If you leading, it'll be like a blind person leading. If you want me to guide you, the most important matter is for General to get his promotion. I I'd, I'd better go. He quickly took large strides and headed towards the north. The female disciples shouted, "General! General!" How could Ling Hu Chang pay attention to them? When he went around a hillside, he went up a tree. <laughs> he hid in a tree. He waited up there for about four hours before he saw the Hung Shan School's disciples walk past in sorrow. He followed behind them from far away, secretly protecting them. Okay, he doesn't want to.、Uh, he doesn't want to leave them, but he does want to keep his promise and protect them. <clears throat> foul, foul is like dirty, like dirty or disgusting, like a foul smell. <clears throat> Lindsay, oh, you like the story time? Well,、uh, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, thanks for joining. <clears throat> When Ling Hu Chong arrived at, a, at an inn in a small town, he thought, "I've already clashed with the Devil Sect and the Song Shan Schools' groups. This Quan, this Chan Zhou's general Wu Tianre must have a bit of reputation by now. Your granny, this disguise as a general, isn't that good anymore." He called the inn's servant and gave him two seal, silver taels to buy him clothes, shoes, and a cap to remodel his disguise. He told him that he was handling a case to catch thieves, so the servants wouldn't tell anyone about what he's doing, and that if the thieves ma-、uh, and that if the thieves escaped to the ocean, then he would come back and arrest the servants instead. Later, he arrived at a calm and secluded place. He pulled his fine, thick beard off and took off his general's clothes, leather boots, Yao Dao saber, and the government documents. He then changed into the set, the inns, wait, the set, the clothes. 
He then changed into the clothes the inn's servants bought, uh, brought him. He buried all of the previous disguise in a big hole. From now on, he wouldn't be called General anymore. As he finished changing into his new disguise, he felt a slight melancholy, missing the general character already. Two days later, he bought a longsword from a weapons shop in Jianning Prefecture and put it in his bundle. He again felt happy that he no longer he had no other matters. <clears throat> Ling Huchong then observed that the Hangshan schools' nuns entered Fu Zhou's walls to enter a monastery. The board in front of the monastery said Wu Xiang Temple. He sighed and thought, This burden has been released from my shoulder. Although I promised Ding Jing Shu Tai to bring them here, I didn't, re I didn't really bring them here. But they already arrived here safely. So I've, I've already fulfilled my promise. <clears throat> da -da -da. Wait a minute. Uh, we're done. Yay! You're saying foul is not, doesn't mean disgusting? Really? <clears throat> like, oh no, 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 no. I was thinking of foul. <clears throat> F-O-U-L. No. I was thinking of foul. Foul means disgusting. I I knew this. I knew a foul is like a is a bird. All right. Yeah, but I was wrong. <clears throat> That's two songs. God damn it! <laughs> you caught me, Patrick. Thanks a lot. <clears throat> yeah, he's becoming an an amazing actor. He's a general. <laughs> Damn it! I was thinking of foul. Okay, that's two songs. Ugh. You got me. You got me. All right, I'm gonna sing two songs. Let me go pee first. Um, if you guys have some suggestions. Some request, then let me know. If not, I'll choose the songs. Uh, give me like two minutes. 